What's up? What's up? Yo, chill. I'm writing this thing down. Chill out. Listen to some Augustus Pablo. Mm. Bless up. Bless up. Okay. Let's get into it. This is fresh up. Oh. What's going on, everyone? Thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in, watching on the replay. If you're watching on the replay, type in hashtag replay. Thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in. This is Paul. I'm checking in with another live stream, getting my reps in from Technically Speaking. So what I uh, several months ago, I put out uh, something. What are some topics you want me to talk about? And one of the topics was about uh, bouncing back after divorce and, and resilient love. And so I forget, I'm trying to remember what exactly it was. And it's irrelevant right now. I just remember that this is one of the topics that people asked me to talk about. So here I am on the day of love, Valentine's Day. For those that are celebrating, bless up and happy Valentine's Day to you. For those that are separated, uh, that are not celebrating, Good Wednesday to you, my folks. So here's what this thing is. I want you to listen to this quote. Every time your heart is broken, a doorway cracks open to a world full of beginnings and new opportunities. That's by Patty Roberts. Last, no, two weeks, maybe it was two weeks ago, a friend of mine, uh, my podcast buddy, probably if you're watching me on Facebook, bless up and, well, and hey, how you doing? Um, I posted, uh, I have a podcast out and also on YouTube, I have a podcast out with one of my guys, Brian Rankin. So Brian got married recently. And when he came back, he went to his honeymoon before he actually got married. And when he came back from the honeymoon, I was on a podcast with him. We were getting on this recording. I could just see this dude beaming like, man, happy. Just like, woo. I'm like, damn, so I'm like, I feel, I feel, I felt this dude through the video. That's how much this was popping. So I'm I'm on with him and I'm sharing. I'm like, man, I got to tell you, I'm a, I noticed that I became aware at that time. Like I am a freaking cynic of love. I really am. My man, Corey, bless up, King. I am a cynic of love. Like I, I just like, I, I hear about love stories and stuff. I'm like, bah humbug, man. I'm like, I don't even, I don't care. I don't want to hear this shit. And uh, having that space with Brian gave me an opportunity to really look at some things that I had been putting off for a while. And I was even teaching a class about it on Sunday. And I, I figured that I was sharing, I shared some things in class. And I'm going to share some things here with you all that I think is going to be helpful. If if you want to get in relationship or, or right relationship, what it is, this video is not about like bah humbug the Valentine's Day. This is beyond Valentine's Day. This is about like, you defining what this term that's out here loosely, what love is for yourself, self-love and all these things. So I'm going to go over in this video, there's going to be four components that I'm going to go over that will support you in truly figuring out this, this love thing and having something that's real. I want to put a disclaimer, you searching for something that's real may mean you may be by yourself for a little something, something. So I'm just giving you a heads up. It's, it's, that time alone is going to be very valuable and it's going to give you the space that you can really reflect and get into a relationship that's in alignment with who you truly are. So here, here we're going to rock with this. Uh, this first one that, um, that I'm going to share with you all is basically what happened with me and Brian. Um, or like when I was, when I was, when I was listening to Brian and seeing this energy beaming off him, he, he, he really gave me hope. I was like, damn, man. I was like, yo, okay. Yeah, let me explore this this resistance I'm having towards this love thing or like relationship and what have you and see what's really going on. So when I started really unraveling this whole piece, it started going back to past relationships that I've had all the way back into freaking high school. So one of the things that came up was like there was always some sort of circumstance or situation that happened that all of a sudden now it's like, oh man, um, damn, that, that jump really hurt. 
it really hurt me. Uh, and uh, me as a dude, I, I've resisted admitting I got hurt, especially in a relationship. Because back in the day and even growing up, I'd be like, man, come on, get over that, man. It's a relationship. Now what I'm finding working with more men is that men, men, men can get hit when they get when they break up and they come out of relationships. So one of the things that I recognized was that my trust had been pretty dinged up. So that's especially coming from divorce and then being in a relationship with two women that I had kids with, that that relationship fell apart and I don't see the kids. So it's like there was a lot of things that were coming up in me and a lot of victim that was coming up. And when it came down to it, like I never trusted anyone because I really didn't trust myself. I was really looking at this situation and recognizing like, damn, man, like I, what, what the story I was making up in my head is like, who are you to get love when you can't even trust your instincts to not get with this person and not do this? So it for me to step into a relationship, it's, or actually I'm going to speak from a self-love perspective, for me to self, step into love, this self-love, like I got to learn to trust myself. And trusting myself means I get to be courageous. Uh, what the heck does that even mean? Or what, is that, what does that even look like? That means like, listen, if you've been in a bad relationship, being courageous means you're going to step into another relationship aware of your scars and free of being shackled by them. Okay, so what the, what, Paul? Okay, so let me say it again. Your courageousness in this type of situation is you going into a new relationship aware that you have scars and free of being shackled by them. And being shackled by them means I'm constantly reflecting on what happened. How did I get that scar? Who did it? What was their intention? What was blah, blah, blah. All this stuff that I start going through and then I'm failing to be present in whatever relationship I'm in. So it takes courage to be able to shut that crap off that's telling you about all these scars and just be aware that you have them and just move in a different way. So that takes courage because that may mean that you're going to have to do some stuff that's out that's different than you know. And you're going to most likely step into something that's going to be uncertain and uncomfortable. So that in itself is going to take courage to step into that. So, oh, oh you know what? I forgot I got tickers. Look. Oh, shit. Courage. All right. What is the next one? Okay. Courage is the first one. Surrender is the second. All right. What the heck is this about? So this is, here's what it comes down to. This surrender piece is really surrendering to yourself and surrendering and surrendering to really defining what love is for you. Okay. This one here, if you got a pen and paper, you may want to write down some of these questions. If you're watching the replay, you'll have the opportunity to pause. Or if you're watching on YouTube, you have the opportunity to pause write these questions down and really reflect on them because this in itself is going to help you in your relationship with self and with others, especially with others. So here's what it is. When you're surrendering to your own love, it means you're asking yourself the following questions like the following. What is love to you? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How do you define it? How do you show it? And by the way, uh, listen, even if it's just for this exercise, I want you to be free of the love language and attachment styles and all that stuff that's out in, the, out in the world right now. I just want you to tap into what your heart and your spirit is telling you or what, and what responses are coming when you ask yourself these questions. The next question is, who modeled love for you? Okay, who modeled loving? And is your expression of love theirs or your own? And is your expression, of, after you figured out, like, who modeled love for you, right? Like, who taught you really how to love? Like, was it this? Was it that? Okay, cool. Now, when you look at how you express love, how you show it, is your expression theirs or is it your own? It's, it's, it's neither right or wrong. It's more of an awareness piece. And this is surrendering into love, like what it means for you, what it is for you. What's the importance of this? Well, uh, if you've gone through heartbreak and you, and you have this space of, you had a, I'm going to speak for myself. I had a story of what quote unquote love is. So when I went through my divorce, especially when I went through my divorce, I was like, I was, 
I was in shell shock because like, especially going through family court and lawyers and all that stuff, I got smacked upside the head with the different things that I learned about what relationships are, marriages are, divorce. And it had me really check what is love? <laughs> like, what is it for me? Um, and that's been a journey, people. Like, I've been divorced for, oh my gosh, almost 10 years now. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's been a journey. It's been a journey and it continues to be a journey because I'm. All, it's always about learning and self-development. Um, so here's what it is, right? So you have this surrender piece. And again, this is just surrendering to your own love. And that's really defining what that is for you. Now, this next piece that you're going to have is being open. What? Yes. Um, being open to new ways of how, quote unquote, this love thing can show up for you. Or you know, being, op being, yeah, being open to new ways that love works and how it can show up. I think that's one of the things that's very interesting that I'm noticing about like and hearing more about relationships and really reflecting on my journey with relationships, especially staying single and really just exploring and figuring out like what kind of environment do I want to put myself in or what kind of environment am I providing? So part of this, and when I speak about being courageous and speak about being open or surrendering, another big part of this is being open to new ways that this can look. The key thing is, especially since you surrender to your own version of love, it's more authentic to now be open because you know yourself, you know who you are, you know what love is. And I'm not saying you have to defend it, but you can explain it and express it so that another person gets it. So once you have that space, then you can be open to new ways to love and know, OK, like, oh, John, this feels right. This does not. You know, you can figure all that stuff out. It becomes very helpful. All right. Bless up and thank you for those that are watching. Write some, if you have a question or something, you have a comment, please feel free. Some Somebody may uh, see that in the replay and then be like, oh, snap. You know what? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's all about conversation and exploration. So thank you all for watching. If you're watching on the replay, hashtag replay. If you watch on YouTube, yo, smash it. Well, they say smash the likes. Hit the subscribe. Hook it up. All right, everybody, listen, the last one before I get out of here. Oh, was it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is not even right one for you, but this is about getting a support space. Uh, the best way I can really just explain this is knowing your boundaries, okay? what I hear a lot, the non-negotiables. Uh, I posted a video about what your instructions would be if you were a product and someone took you home and then they opened you up. Then there's this like thing about like, oh, these are the instructions. Oh, this is okay. I got to water them. I got to give them 100 ounces of water a day. All right. And feed him uh, smoothies. And, you know, it's like there's instructions. What are the instructions? When we can start to realize that, I think this in itself will boost relationships. Because I, I, the what I'm experiencing, what I, what I'm experiencing in in seeing other relationships, and what I've, I've, I'm experiencing and learning more about my patterns in relationship. Some I talked about in Heal Thy Man Method. I'm constantly looking at my patterns. One of the things I looked at was that I was. I fail to really lock into my support space. Like I call it a support space. Some people say safe space. I call it a support space because it means I get to know who I am so I can express to somebody, hey, this is how I need support. So I feel safe. I feel stable. I feel like I could trust you. So in order to get to those things, it's very important to have time to yourself said this in the beginning of the video, listen, some people may not like it. It's very difficult to have time to yourself. It, it, I'm not, not going to say it's very difficult. It can be difficult. And you can overcome the difficulty by really settling in and really going for it, figuring out like if you're like, if you had heartbreak and you really do want to be in a relationship, I invite you to look at what is it about a relationship that you want. These questions are going to help you get there. Because listen, I guess like I mentioned, heartbreak sucks. Heartbreak sucks. And 
one of the things I fail to recognize, and I don't know if it's the same for you. If it is, you can let me know in the comments. Is that like as much as I said and thought like I was not, I was I was free of carrying past baggage. I was because that pack, that baggage was like, oh shoot! If I was in a relationship, soon as I saw something, I was like, ah shit! Here it go, here it go. She about to do this. Uh, you know what? I'm disconnecting so I don't get too hurt. May not have been anything of the sort. Yeah, again, like I was carrying around like the shackles of the scars and failing to recognize I gotta shed, I gotta shed it. I know I got a scar, but I can move differently from here. So listen, thank you all for tuning in. I'm going to wrap this up and on this Valentine's Day, day of love, I'm gonna go to bed early. Yeah. So blessings, thank you. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. I will get back to them. If you like this, you thought it was valuable, and you know, if you have a friend that's gone through serious heartbreak, send this video to them. Have them answer these questions and really check in themselves. If you have a question or you're like, hey, my Paul, what would it be like to really work with you? And like, hey, cool. To work with me, just send me a DM. We'll figure something out. All right. Bless up to you, everybody. Until next time, I'm looking, shooting, I'm targeting to get two more live streams in before the end of the week so I can get back on pace to get my 30 in. So, uh, stay tuned. All right, everybody. Peace. And until next time, I'm out of here. Peace.